observations from today's Gospel. This is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 to 23. One, uh, after Jesus asked, who do people say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus said to uh, Peter, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. So first point, you know, there's truths and there's mysteries that are not revealed, they're not, not the product of logical deduction of academia or a professor telling you. Uh, there's truth and there's knowledge, there's mystery that really are just revealed by the Father. Not revealed by flesh and blood, but by the Heavenly Father Himself. So here, you know, when you're in the context of, a, let's say, a problem, a, a situation, a, a difficulty you're having with a friend or a loved one, with a family member, and after we think it, of the situation from just one perspective, our perspective, how it affects me, my pride, my ego, my whatever, but there are many other angles and much of truth in each situation, each event, each difficulty. So it would be good to ask the Father, Father, reveal to me what flesh and blood cannot understand, cannot see in regards to this relationship, in regards to this situation, and to be open to it and ask for it. Let me see, Lord, beyond just my flesh and blood. So, one, the first thing to teach is that the Father does reveal mystery beyond our flesh and blood, beyond our capacity to understand. The second one is the following, that when the Father reveals something, it is a blessing. Jesus Christ himself, blessed are you, Simon Peter, because this was revealed by the Heavenly Father. So there's a blessedness, uh, the Greek word makar, happy. There's a happiness, a blessedness, a, a fortunate, a, a favor that God gives when he reveals truth, when he reveals a mystery. So to also allow ourselves to savior, uh, to, you know, really allow the happiness to sink in, the favor of God, when something has been revealed. Let it be in regards to a, a, a situation, to be able to see it from God's eye, uh, or just the mysteries of our faith, to understand mysteries of the faith. So here I also put a footnote. Uh, we often want our children, our grandchildren, and others to be able to see the truth and, and understand as we come to understand our faith. But even Jesus Christ himself says, no one comes to me unless the Father brings him to him, unless the Father reveals. So often we also have to pray to the Father that the Spirit might enlighten a person to understand the mysteries of our faith. Uh, so not just in regards to trying to understand a situation, but also interceding for others to reveal that the Father may reveal to them truth and mystery. But So the second point is this blessedness. God grant favor upon this person. Bless that person with truth, with knowledge. And the blessedness that often happens is it's like a moment of enlightenment. It's like a light bulb just went on. You know, as a, a professor, as a teacher, I, I love seeing, you know, when you're teaching someone, a kid, you know, something, and all of a sudden when he clicks, and then and you see that they, they're just, oh, I get it. Oh, that, that, that was a blessed moment. Favor of the Lord was upon the person. The person was enlightened by truth. Uh, it's, it's almost like the person becomes larger. You know? And actually, the Greek word for uh, blessed, uh, makar, M A K A R, comes from the root word mak, M M A K. And mak means to become large, to, to, to become long. So when you're blessed, there's a happiness that causes one to almost be enlarged. It's like, wow, you know, something beautiful happens. So the second point is we should also pray that others may receive that blessedness, that enlightenment, that understanding. And then the third point that I would like to uh, 
regards to the gospel to be, is that after Jesus asked, who do people say that I am? And then Peter shared what was revealed by the Father, not flesh and bones, and blessed indeed he was. He, he grew, he was enlarged, he was enlightened by mystery. And the third thing that, that happened here was Jesus tells his disciples, he, he says, then he strictly ordered, strictly ordered, not just ordered, but strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. You, you would think, you know, well, God the Father has just revealed this great mystery that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Christ, the Messiah, the awaited one. And then Jesus says, okay, I'm glad you guys know it. You've been enlightened. You're larger than life now. Great mystery. Now you cannot tell anyone. The famous messianic secret. Uh, you know, just refer to that as the messianic secret. He wants to keep the secret. One great lesson that we can get from this is just because you have been blessed, uh, favored, uh, made happy, enlarged, transfigured, enlightened by a mystery, by a truth, does not mean that you're free to share it. And that's difficult. Because when the Lord reveals something, the one thing you want to do is share with everyone. You know, so because you want everybody to also have that favor, that blessedness that you just received. To be enlightened by truth and mystery. Who does not want to share that? Who does not want that? So I'm going to go out and share with you. Careful. Like in this case, there's times when what has been revealed may be just for you. Do not Presume that you're free to share. Do not presume it. Wait for the orders from God the Father saying, now I want you to share with so and so. Okay, now share. But just because the Father reveals some mystery to you does not mean that you're free to share. Let me use a, a, an example. Uh, someone who was revealed a great mystery and had to keep it silent because the person did not presume that God ordered, wanted that truth to be shared was at the Annunciation of the Blessed Mother. Great mystery was revealed to her. And indeed, highly favored one, blessed one, happy one. You are, you are called to be the mother of God, the mother of the Son of God, the mother of the Messiah. Let it be done to me according to that word. Mary accepts the will of the Father and the great mystery, the Word of God incarnate in her being, in her womb, in her heart, in her soul. Do we read anywhere in Scripture that Mary shared that truth, that mystery with someone else? She didn't share it with her husband, Joseph. She kept that to herself. She didn't share it with anyone unless it was revealed to her that the person already knew. The visitation. Mary goes in haste to visit Elizabeth to help her out. You know, she's in old age and pregnant. Okay, Mary, I gotta go help my, my cousin. She's gonna need some help. She goes there. But she has no intention of sharing the secret of what mystery was revealed to her. When Elizabeth sees her, said, Blessed are you among women, and how can be that the mother of our Lord is coming? Now, Elizabeth is sharing with Mary what God has already revealed to Elizabeth, that she is the mother of our Lord. Because Mary hears that Elizabeth is saying this truth and this mystery that was revealed to Mary in secret, now, therefore, Mary feels free to rejoice with Elizabeth about the news. And then the great Magnifica. The great Magnifica is Mary finally breaking her silence of great mystery and now able to share with her. Oh, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. I've been wanting to talk about this forever and I couldn't because I couldn't presume that God wanted me to tell the whole world. 
My soul proclaims the great, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for the Lord has done great things for me in holy. This is praise and worship. She is finally able to speak, and she got it all out. But with someone that the Father personally revealed mystery to. So just because you understand a mystery, or the Father has revealed a great truth, and you've been enlightened by the understanding of that, does not mean that you're free to now share it with everyone. You can't presume that. You have to wait. Wait to see what the order is from the Father. It may be that that truth needs to gestate a little bit more in your heart so that you can fully understand what it is. It could be that you have to wait for the other person to be ready. It could be that you have to wait for the Father to reveal that mystery to that other person. And then, once the word is out, you can rejoice in that truth. There are many things that could happen. Don't presume that because you have the knowledge of a truth, of a mystery, of something that enlightens you, that makes you blessed, not me, you're free to share. So here we ask with the virtue of prudence. Prudence is the mother of all virtues. To know what to say, how to say it, when to say it, why to say it. Prudence. Ask for the gift of prudence. Also ask for the gift of charity. Sometimes out of charity, there are truths that should not be said until the right time. For example, let's say a friend of yours has been gaining weight. Do you go up to them and say, oh, you're getting fat? It is the truth. The person is gaining weight. But out of charity, you don't say that. Why? Because charity over, it's, it's more important to be loving and charitable than to share a truth that may be none of your business. You follow me? So out of prudence, out of charity, but also often we have to withhold truth and mystery out of humility. Why is that? Precisely because when you're blessed, it's, the, it's something large happened. You're in large, makem, a cave, that's the root word for blessedness. Something large in you happens. You're enlightened, you're a brig of the life. And sharing from that state may be seen by others as you being presumptuous. As you thinking you know better than. You're now you think you're better than all of us. You, with great mysteries and truth. And often out of humility, we have to just wait for the right moment, the right time, the right person, the right order from the Father to tell you, now you're free to share. The Messianic secret, in the case of Jesus Christ, he told us that tell no one, but after the right time, after his death and resurrection, then he appeared to the apostles and said, now go to all nations, <laughs> Receive the Spirit and by the power of the Spirit go out and spread the good news to all nations, to all people. But you had to wait for the right time. One, empowered by the Spirit. Two, the events of the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ already unfolded and waiting for that order of the Messiah saying, now go. So, three lessons from today's Gospel. One, there's mysteries and truth that are only revealed by the Father. Two, when that happens, you indeed become large, blessed, highly favored. Enjoy it because it's a beautiful thing. And three, just because the Father revealed a mystery to you, a truth to you, does not mean you have the freedom to share. May we grow in prudence. May we grow in charity. May we grow in humility. And above all, may we grow like Mary in patience waiting, but above all, to be able to praise and worship when the right time comes. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior.